Sunday after Pentecost continues in your service leaflet or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Joining together our voices in the hymn of praise on page 356. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. For neither is there any God besides you who is cares for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have the power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 86 found on page 710 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read verses 11 through 17 in unison. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the netherless pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your coming. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. 
because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our body. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven 
may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds, weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving and ever-present God. Amen. Welcome. Welcome to our kitchen yet again. I hope you're well. I have to tell you that I miss you and I've been thinking about you lots. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew and we're still with the parables. Sometimes when we look out at the world or even around us into our immediate circle of life, we might wonder where justice is or where God is or where are found answers to the ethical dilemmas we face each day nowadays, such as to mask or not, to open school or not, to have that birthday party or not, 
to go to Disneyland or not, to return to the bar stool or not, to worship together again in our worship space or not. How can this world be put to right, we sometimes ask ourselves, and what difference does our faith really make? Sometimes we recognize that things are not what they seem, and promises, regrettably, no longer have meaning. Pain exists, it seems, in endless supply. Darkness rules and chaos looms before us. It's as if we've been sown into a field of weeds and they're sapping us of our nourishment and the right to grow fully into the light. And in those times when we feel this way, we feel the same, I think, as those persons who first found comfort in the words of Jesus and Paul, persons whose heritage includes the words of wisdom, Jesus, Paul, wisdom, all of which are before us today in our scripture offerings. Wisdom speaks of a God, a sovereign God, who governs, governs with forbearance and who judges with mildness, who demonstrates through his works that the righteous must be kind. Wisdom speaks of hope. And Paul joins in the chorus, reminding us that the sufferings in his present time and our present time and all the present times to be will be nothing compared with the ultimate union of persons of faith with God at the end of time. Quite some time ago, I was with a group of people working our way in Bible study through the Gospel of Matthew, toiling over the thought of the weeds among us being allowed to grow rather than risk inflicting unintended damage on the wheat among us. I recall that one of the persons in that group offered a flash of insight that actually changed my whole understanding of this parable. You see, I was focused on the, re the revenge aspect and wondering about the burning of the weeds piece of the parable and, and trying to grapple with what that was all about. This person suggested that the point of permitting the weeds to remain in the field with us, presumably good seed types, was to remind us that we need not worry ourselves about their final fate. God will take care of it. We do not have to be the judges here. God will take care of it. God has the capability, I don't need to tell you, God has the capability to sort out the good from the bad. Our job, I believe, is to look to being the best wheat we can be. And for sure, <laughs> isn't this job enough for us? This is easier than trying to correct or judge those who would sap us of our spiritual strength. Isn't it tiring enough to carry the things we carry each day on a daily basis in this fraught day and age without trying to fix everybody else's stuff? Are we obliged to bear the additional weight we put upon ourselves required or necessary to compensate for those people we differ from in our ways of seeing the world? In our parable, we might wonder whether the stalks of wheat even know if the stalks adjacent are weeds. No one who had the ears to listen to these words in the days of old, and I believe that no one of us here now or wherever you are now or wherever you want to be now, would have considered herself or himself to be one of the weeds. 
We have hope, don't we? And we have faith, don't we? And we have the assurances of pardon to rely on, don't we? This parable for today is a lesson in righteousness. After all, righteousness is one of the prime subjects in Matthew. The emphasis on the law and on behavior in Matthew stresses a moral compass with Jesus Christ as the lodestar. And righteousness reaches deeply into Matthew's heritage in the First Testament, the Hebrew corpus. Remember, Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And there are over 625 references to righteousness in several forms of that term in the Hebrew Bible. This parable is an invitation to behave as God would have us behave. And fundamental to that is the assurance, the promise, the acknowledgement that God is a sovereign God. It seems we are people who by our nature question and worry and doubt. The world seems way yonder out of kilter just now, doesn't it? And it seems that we cannot change it. The task feels to be too big. Any one of the major issues before us in this day and age is big enough. How can we hope in the unseen? How can we hope for the unseen? Some time ago, a woman passing observed our open door once again of the many times she had passed it. She was invited to come in, and this parish family tended to her wounds. Her hope in the unseen brought her here. Some time ago, a couple struggling with the cancers in the husband came here. And this parish prayed for them and communed with them and helped them find sufficient faith to face his eventual death peacefully. Their hope in the unseen brought them here. I believe these things happen regularly among our community of St. Paul's, often unknown to me directly and elsewhere, of course. And few of us ever knew the names of any of these persons, nor if they were wheat or weed. As I think about you now, I can see faces of many of us who know the fear of looking into the unseeable and the unknowable. And even though we cannot sit together right now in worship in the church, I know this parish family ministers to those persons, those persons with the fear that they're looking into. In the midst of our questions and doubt and worry, this parish, you, this parish ministers to them and us to each other. If you think about the people you know in this St. Paul's family, if you think about them now, you might perhaps see in them antibodies to the ills of the world. On, these, on those occasions when we are compelled to ask, how can this world be put to right? Or what difference does our faith really make? Or where is God in all this? The answer is right here, right there, wherever you are. This parish community, even in a state of uncertainty, can and does by untold and unique gestures offer solace to the whole world. The benefits of membership in this community are worth far more than money. We try hard to offer unconditional love. Sometimes we win and sometimes we lose. And in that, in that 
trying hard is the presence of God, my brothers and sisters, wherever the circumstances of this world would have us be. Again, to paraphrase Pogo, for those of you old enough to know, we have met our hope and it is us. Today, I invite you again to join with me as we journey into the unseen from the unknowable, into the hope necessary for us to function as a community of faith. We can offer each other through our baptismal promises or our simple wheat-like presence in this world. Such things as our nurturing prayers, our corporate wisdom, our comforting words, our unfettered acceptance. We will offer our help so that we may each grow into the light of life as a person who will one day help us join with God to put this world that wee bit writer than it was before she or he came into it. This, my brothers and sisters, is what we do wherever we are. This is what God does for us wherever we are. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you all to stand wherever you are and join in saying together the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People is found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For Oscar, Karen, Jonathan, Doug, Jenny, Lori, Patrick, Nurit, Linda, Danny, John, Susanna, Katie, Patty, Harry, Beth, Madeline, David, Renee, Arlie, Elizabeth, John, and Father Jim. 
for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Thomas's, Reed Hill, and Chapel of the Good Shepherd, Ridgeway. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. Remembering especially this day Cornelia, we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful Father. Father. In, in your, your compassion, compassion forgive, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us, us by your Spirit that, that we may, may live and, and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, name through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
61 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your service bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it's right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourselves. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject, subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
los dones de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Tómenlos en memoria de que Cristo murió por ustedes y aviéntense de él en sus corazones por fe y con agradecimiento. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving. My brothers and sisters, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion. But in the circumstances that impede them from actually receiving the Holy Communion. I invite you all to join with me in the following prayer in your service bulletin. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Post-communion prayer, or a 
in your service bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and all the days of your life. Let us go forth now in the name of our loving Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Charms are tears and bids our souls. 